In this video, I'm covering the best features of the Quicken Simplified Budgeting app so that you can keep your spending organized to hit your financial goals. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Justine. I'm a personal finance educator and enthusiast, and today we are diving into the Quick and Simplify budgeting app. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks to make the most out of your app and your budget so that you can understand the details of your spending so that it reflects your financial journey and where you want it to take you in terms of your financial goals. So we're actually going to start with how to use the spending plan, which in my mind is the thing that you're going to be in every day. <laughs> If you wanna be in your budget every single day, this is kind of the first place you wanna look. So let's go over to the budgeting app. Okay, when you're logged onto the desktop version of Simplify, you're going to be greeted with your dashboard. But what I want you to do is go over to the left-hand menu and hover over it click on spending plan, and this is where you're going to see a picture of your monthly budget. Simplify breaks it down into four different areas. You're going to see the income after bills and saving. You're going to see any bills and subscriptions denoted in this section. Next, you're going to see planned spending. These are any budgeted areas that happen outside of those bills being paid and any savings goals that you might have. So things like groceries, gas and fuel, gifts, restaurants and shopping would live here. Next is any other spending that hasn't been denoted by a planned spending category. So if you have one-off purchases that are happening within the month, then this is where that other spending and transactions would live. Then you're going to see the amount available within the month. So then you can go ahead and allocate those funds to a specific category. So if I'm gonna go back to planned spending, you're gonna see that I have categories listed here for my different types of spending. In fact, categories and tags are baked into Simplify's budgeting app and they help you categorize those expenses into those different buckets so that you can clearly organize your expenses. In order to access categories and tags, you can click on settings, categories and tags, and then see which categories are already pre-populated for you. So you can see some of the major categories, including auto and transport, you can see dining and drinks here. And then if there's a category that's not listed, you can click in this upper right uh, button, click category, and then you can name it. So this would be a great example if you have a specific vacation that you took that also included eating out, transportation, uh, airfare, hotel, whatever it may be you could lump that into one specific category of your choosing. So let's say I took a trip to Las Vegas and I'm going to name this Las Vegas Vacation. And now this is a subcategory of travel. This is a type of expense. You could also choose to add a category that's related to a specific type of income and then click add. And now that category has been created and then I can go inside of my monthly budget and assign different transactions that are related to that trip so that I can keep all of those expenses housed under one category. Now let's talk about recurring transactions. Oftentimes, and if you're anything like me, you have recurring transactions that typically happen every single month. Think about things like monthly subscriptions or gym membership in which you're paying about the set amount every single month or perhaps it's an electricity or utility bill that you're paying every single month. You'll want to note those recurring transactions so Simplify can automatically update that for future monthly budgets. So you're going to stay under settings and then click all recurring and then it's going to show you all the different active recurring transactions you might have. They can also denote it by pulling out all of the bills that you have, any subscriptions, any income that's recurring, and any transfers that are recurring. So then you can go in and take a look and make sure that these are all categorized correctly. And if they aren't for whatever reason, you can click the three dots menu, click 
edit series, and then make sure that recurring amount, you can change that. You can change the selected account that it's within and any type of category and tags that you want to denote. You can also change the frequency and the build due date by clicking change and then choosing the start date here and then also the frequency. You can also denote whether this is a bill or a subscription and then whether or not you want to exclude it from your spending plan or the reports. So speaking of recurring transactions, you're also going to see reminders inside of the app. So what you're going to do is you're going to head over to transactions and then up in the top, you're going to see different reminders here that are listed. So you can see some past reminders and then some upcoming reminders that are going to happen later throughout the month. So if I wanted to link a reminder to a transaction, all I do is click on the three dots menu and then click link transaction. And then I'm going to find that transaction in the list of transactions from that particular account. So I know that progressive insurance was paid out of the Chase Sapphire account. I can even search for the name progressive and click and then link. So now that reminder has been linked to that specific transaction. You can do this for expenses and income. Next, let's take a look at watch lists. This is one of my favorite features about Simplify. Watch lists are created for you to create some awareness around spending, specifically around spending that has been tricky for you. So for me, it included things like Starbucks, Target, Amazon, and even restaurant spending. So what you can do is you can create a new watch list and then you can create that watch list based off of a particular category, payee, or a tag. So let's say the category was shopping. And then you can include an emoji, shopping. And then you can select different categories that are related to this specific category. So I'm going to do shopping and everything that falls underneath, let's say. So it's already denoted that it's going to include all of these different subcategories of shopping. So you can even set a target amount if you're trying to stay under a specific goal. So I can set that and let's say I wanna set it to $600 and then create. And now with just a click of a button, it's automatically populated exactly how much I've spent in the shopping category. And it even shows me a monthly average. Oh my gosh, $842. And then it even shows you how much I've spent this month, what I'm projected to spend, and then my target amount. I also can see quickly a year to date amount of how much I've spent in this particular category. If I want to see different types of data and reporting for my transactions, it's very easy to do so inside of the app. I'm going to hover over to the left hand menu again and click on transactions. And then I'm going to click this little filter icon up at the top. And then I can filter by specific categories, payee. I can even denote it by different accounts or tags. So let's go back to categories. And then let's say I want to look at all of dining and drinks, including the restaurants. So I'm going to click apply. And then it can easily show me 300, 365 transactions found. Oh my goodness. I can easily start to view this. And what's cool about this is again, it automatically did the work for me. So I can quickly get to the information that I need and then take a look if any of these transactions are misordered, which typically it's not. It's automatically calculated to the right spot. Or if it's something that was vacation related, but it is restaurants, then I could simply just go into one of the line items, click the drop down menu, and then change this to travel. Going back to the Las Vegas vacation example, I could categorize that as a Las Vegas vacation expense, and then it moves it out of that filter for restaurants. Going back out to the dashboard, again, is you can take a look at your cash flow projections throughout the month and throughout several months by making sure that your cash account is linked to Simplify. So this typically looks like a checking account. So if I click onto my checking account, I can actually see the projection 
projected cash flow over the next three months. And the green dots symbolizes any time that I'm receiving a paycheck and the blue dot symbolizes a bill or an expense. I can also see the reminders linked below and it tells me exactly when some of these cash flows are happening and which expenses and bills are happening throughout the month. You can also access your cash flow projections by going to bills and payments and then clicking cash flow. Speaking of bills, let's go back to actually connecting those upcoming bills with your biller. You can do so inside of the app and I think this is an awesome feature because if you're anything like me, when you receive an electricity bill, it's not the same amount every single month, but you can actually connect the biller so that it natively imports the due date and the amount due inside of Simplify and it's going to automatically correct that inside of the app. So where you're gonna go is you're gonna go to settings and then you're going to all recurring and then we're going to click bills and then let's go ahead and even car insurance. This is one that always <laughs> increases over time, right? So you can click the three dots, you can click connect biller and then you're going to search for that biller so next you'll put in your credentials and then you'll be able to connect your biller. So that's a quick rundown of all the best features of the Quick and Simplified Budgeting app. If you can understand the details of how to access your spending and not just accessing it, but really understanding the data and figuring out what are those recurring expenses that you have? How do you create a really robust spending plan that reflects how you most like to spend and save to hit your financial goals. If you have specific questions about what you would like to see in terms of how to access different features or figuring out how to do things inside of the app, tell me in the comments below and I'd be happy to make a video for you. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. And if you're not using the Quick and Simplify Budgeting app, it's linked below. Try it out and until then, happy budgeting.